Hello, Renfrey. How you doing? Oh, we I love see. you, RD. We listen to you every week on <laughs> Broken Records. Hey, hey, I want to be a rock star. This week on the show, we're going to be talking about Richard Blackwood. Well, we love you, RD. Check you every day on TV. You'll love to hate this. The debut album from Richard Blackwood. Who the fuck is Richard Blackwood? You might be asking that if you're from outside of the UK. Yeah. Or, yeah. or if you're under the age of 35. Or if you're quite a lot over the age of 35. Basically what I'm saying is there is a very, very small, small amount of people (laughs) who know who Richard Blackwood is. My memories of Richard Blackwood, which are obviously hazy, uh, was of him appearing on Channel 4 a lot. Great memories. (laughs) Richard Blackwood first shot to prominence when his dad married Naomi Campbell's mum. So he was Naomi Campbell's stepbrother. So it's a sort of Broken Records family affair, isn't it? It is. Have we ever had a sort of family thing on Broken Records? We have like a sort of sibling rivalry. Mr. Blobby and Crazy Frog? Again, I I know you don't want to accept this, but they're both fictional characters. (laughs) Refuse to accept that Mr. Blobby is a fictional character. (laughs) Just (laughs) heartbreaking, isn't it, for you? He presented Pop of the... Top, top, pop of the top, pop of the tops, top of the pops, presented top of the pops for a little bit as well. He got his imaginatively titled The Richard Blackwood Show in 1999. I could only find one clip of The Richard Blackwood Show. That's surprising. I know. Or is it? What I did find is him interviewing Mel B. Uh From the Spice Girls. He introduces her, bearing in mind it started in 1999. Spice Girls were quite famous by 1999. Yeah. He introduced her as Mel D. Get up to Mel G. He right. just went, everybody, it's Mel D. And he definitely says D. I, re- I wound it back about five times and I was like, he says Mel- he does say Mel D. And she sort of walks out and I think she's a bit like, did you just call me Mel D? <laughs> and then he just sort of glosses over it like, fuck, I don't know, I called her Mel D. It also is makes it a little bit more awkward because... Just before he introduces Mel D, he's been singing a Diana Ross song dressed as a Chinese girl. And he's still in different the dress. Different times, better times. Different, <laughs> different times. And he's still in the dress. But Richard Blackwood doesn't appear to have really thought too much about any kind of music career until he's got a show on Channel 4. The aforementioned 1, 2, 3, 4, Get With The Wicked, which was his second single, I watched him doing it on Top Of The Pops. And that, Renfri, is where the real magic is happening. Okay. I would suggest all of you, if you take one thing away from this, it would be to watch Richard Blackwood on Top of the Pops. Richard Blackwood is miming, but his mic is also turned on. So occasionally he can go scream or make some noise. And it sounds completely different, both in pitch and tone. This is when the science is, into the lion's den. Yes, my friend, the flow get bent and twisted. But the bloke who does a one, two, three, four, get with a wicked, he cannot be bothered to hold his microphone anywhere near his face <laughs> or at <laughs> any point. And Jamie Thiexon comes in at the end and goes, presenting and getting with the wicked. Is there no end to this boy's talents? <laughs> yes, Jamie, there is. <laughs> there, 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 there very, very definitely is. I wondered what the comments on a video like this would say. Mm. Uh, so I decided to look at the comments. I expected some interesting insight into such an essential, legendary performance on such an iconic television programme. Sadly, there was only one comment from someone oh. called Fiona, ha- Fiona Hamilton from two months ago. And she said, Top of the Pops was a good show. Live and kicking, CD UK, SMTV, my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Fiona, for sharing that heartfelt (laughs) tribute to Richard Blackwood on this video. And um, I was delighted to see that Rommel G replied saying, don't forget the Pepsi chart show on Channel 5. (laughs) How could we? How could we, Rommel G? How could we forget (laughs) such a fantastic work of art? Shall we see if we can try and get 50 comments on that video? from yeah. uh, having our listeners just, just comment. If you could go on to that video and just name television programmes from your childhood. <laughs> just go, Top of the Pops was great. And who remembers Round the Twist? <laughs> Top of the Pops was great. <laughs> that and, be- who, and who remembers Spats? <laughs> Top of the Pops was great. <laughs> who remembers 
the flying doctors <laughs> my childhood that top of the wonderful. pops top of the pops is great who remembers mike and angelo <laughs> and woof what on earth uh... <laughs> <laughs> ah. oh goodness me that would be if people could if you could take two minutes out of your day to do that that would be amazing um, don't don't at us if we don't want it to come back to us. I think we should no, no. just have a, don't add, uh, have a list. At, just reply to Fiona Hamilton. She... <laughs> just reply to Fiona, yeah. With the lack of reviews, I'm going to have to go to Amazon.co.uk again. Brazen Dave gave the album one star on the 23rd of July 2014. Two th- why are you reviewing this? <laughs> In 2014. I have no idea. And it's something that he... You know, he should ask himself, really, because he did, he's pretty angry about it. He said in his review titled, I hope he is sorry for this. In his one star review, he said, if I shit in your ears, you would thank me. This is well naff. Is that the whole review? That's the review. <laughs> and I'm pleased to say that the case of the defence has been filed a couple of occasions with this record. 17th of September, 2000, six days after the album came out, Nicola.Potts61 at freeserve.co.uk said, <laughs> great stuff, great being GR8. Great, is. great stuff. And then the review said, not only is he a good looking blokey, but he is multi-talented. I'm surprised that Mam Who the Man plus one two three four Get with a Wicked didn't get higher in the charts. Oh well, he's definitely got a chart topper in his lot. Hmm. It's a mix <laughs> of R and B and rap. If you like his first two singles, then get this album. If you didn't, well, don't. <laughs> <laughs> what amazing consumer advice, John Simpson, on the sixth of May two thousand six. Took a little time. A little longer to consider that. Probably about the right time, I'd say. Um, he called. Uh, his review said, okay. Before giving it five stars. That's not okay, is it? <laughs> That's not okay. That's not what that means. That's okay. It gives, it's okay. It's absolutely perfect in every way. It's okay. Like, that's what five stars is meant to mean, mate. Anyway, he said... Richard Blackwood shouldn't be taken seriously. That's the whole point of this album, and the title sums it up. It's for laughs, this. This ain't good rap, but it's funny. Music shouldn't be taken that seriously. It's just fun. Lighten up and get a sense of humour. Come on. (laughs) Oh, dear. Oh, John. Who hurt you? Who hurt you, John? Five stars, it's all right, it's okay. Come on, stop listening to stuff and deciding whether it's good or not, you nerds. What did you think of Richard Blackwood's You'll Love to Hate This? I'm Richard Blackwood, I'm great. Here's some women who agree, or who I have paid (laughs) to agree. We love you, RB. We watch you every day on TV. Every day? You Sky Plus and singled out? That doesn't count. We watch you on TV every day. It's not Trevor McDonald delivering the news to the country yes, yes. every day of the week. What, a, la- it... what, a, what a hero. <laughs> what a lad. Yeah, what a I lad. Think... Trevor McDonald's a lad. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the scene like Crispy and Cream. Crispy Cream Donuts are not, we're not started by two men called Crispy <laughs> and Cream. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul Crispy and Martin Cream. Let's start a donut company, Paul. What a good idea, Martin. What should we call them? What about Martin and Paul's? No, no, I've got a better one. There's a sort of squelchy R and B pop song called Nasty with a really horrible sounding electro bass. And Richard Blackwood says, "Shout out loud if you're horny." <laughs> oh God, maybe I'm reading too much into this as a lyric, but it feels like to me the reason for that being in the song is then live. He could go to his like security. He's like, yeah, the, the ones who, the ones, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah but can you pass out the pussy passes to the people yeah. and go, Ooh. yeah, you know, yeah. you know, which just then. And then his security go, would go, there's only nine people here. We haven't actually discussed whether Richard Blackwood is a, a good rapper or not. Um, okay, yeah. we can do and, that now. He's not. Actually, well, 
and then you get a smooth ballad to end the album called They Don't Know Me. And the lyrics say, no matter who you are, no matter what you see, no matter where you are, no matter where you be, you don't know me. No one on the planet knows him. No matter who you are, even my mum, no matter what you see, even if you see the things that my mum sees, no matter where you are, even if you're in my mum's house, no matter where you be, again, in my mum's house, you don't know me. So he's even saying, even my mum, nobody knows me. Nobody. <laughs> Which in a few years would be true. In 2003, he filed for bankruptcy. Yeah. Um, after not working for a little bit and apparently tried to throw himself out of a window to commit suicide doing that. Now, there's nothing funny about that. And I'm sort of tempted to say that that is the rock bottom. That is the worst moment of his life. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, from what I've read, yeah. Yeah, but I'm not sure it is because in that same year, he appeared in a television program called Celebrity Detox Camp <laughs> where he had 18 litres of coffee pumped into his anus. 18 <laughs> litres of coffee pump, yeah. pumped into your anus. Richard now has to prepare his anus for entry. I think I'd jump out of a window if someone did that to me live on television. I don't even know what the whole shit is. 18 litres of coffee pumped into his anus. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> How was that? Richard's insertion is complete. So yeah, so he had 18 litres of coffee. <laughs> He had 18 litres of coffee pumped into his own. I mean, coffee <laughs> enemas, these are these are a thing, aren't they? 18 uh, fucking litres? I, what? <laughs> fucking, you're going to shit his brain out if he does that. I am Oh, I've I, accidentally I... shat my skull out because I had that much coffee pumped into my... <laughs> pumped into my anus. <laughs> I'm just looking up an article. The standard <laughs> procedure of coffee enema is as follows. Add three rounded tablespoons... <laughs> of slightly roasted drip ground coffee into approximately one litre of boiling distilled or filtered water and continue boiling for three minutes. So they're suggesting you just do it with one litre, not 18. So it does feel <laughs> like the, the makers of the programme were taking record. the piss somewhat. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the image that he put forward was he thought he was a fucking superstar. He thought he was a yeah. Kanye, almost. And then, what, four years? Would you say it was 2004? 2003? Three three years later he's getting 18 litres of coffee pumped up his ass. that is a that is a hell of a fall from grace isn't it that is mad I mean I don't even know oh, oh god oh. 18 litres of coffee pumped nah. into your anus